What is going on everybody? Today we are sitting in a brand new 2023 Model S long range, not a plaid, but the exciting part about this car is it does have Tesla's new hardware for hardware that includes new cameras on the outside, a new internal computer on the inside, maybe, and probably a radar also on the inside that maybe probably isn't enabled yet. There's still a lot of mystery around hardware for and exactly what it entails, exactly what it's going to improve on the cars. But today we're gonna to take this car out for a drive and test out some of its features. Now, the bummer about hardware four if you buy a Hardware 4 car today, Model S and X have been coming with Hardware 4 since March, and Model Y just recently started coming with Hardware 4, and Model 3 will be following up soon, I'm sure. The bummer is that a lot of things don't work yet. So you do not have Park Assist. It looks like I'm going to play around a little bit more. You don't have Summon. You don't have Auto Park. Uh, you don't get full self-driving beta yet. There are no beta cars. Uh, I mean, there's probably some employee cars, but no customer cars with beta uh, that are on hardware for yet. But you do get autopilot and navigate on autopilot. So we're going to test those out today and see how this car performs and see if, you know, it's performing better or the same or, or maybe worse. I, I wouldn't expect that, but you never know. So let's take this for a spin uh, and check it out. The other thing I'm going to look for is if there's any cameras like anywhere else. I don't think so, but we'll see. So let's go. All right. Now, maybe before we go out on the drive, we should actually look and see what hardware for actually is so the big thing is the new cameras there's several things here and if you look in this camera here you can see there is a red glow and that's usually the telltale sign of a hard hardware 4 camera also this uh, blinker light is shorter as well next up moving to the b pillar you can see again that red glow on the camera a hardware 4 b pillar camera now there are no changes to the camera positioning as far as we know on the model s or model x with hardware 4 but one big big change you will see if you look at the front cameras here, I will zoom in. If you look at these front cameras, you can see the two on the right are red and the one on the left is not. The one on the left is actually a dummy camera that is not real. So Hardware 4 only uses two front facing cameras instead of three, like Hardware 3 uses. Now I wanna get a really close look at the headlights here because there were tons of rumors that the headlights were gonna have a camera in them. I see nothing, they look good, don't get me wrong. Uh, I really like the look of these headlights, actually. I feel like they're different from my Model X, but maybe not. I'll try to do a comparison picture. But if you look here, there's, uh, I don't know. I don't see anything, really. They're a little dirty from driving on the highway. Uh, but other than that, they look fine. I don't see any cameras anywhere here. There were also rumors of there was going to be a bumper camera. If you look down here, nope, that's just a light in there, I promise. And me, there is no camera in there. No camera that I can see at all in there. Going to the other side of the car, of course, you're gonna have the same thing. You have the repeater camera here, that's hardware four. You have the B-pillar camera here, that's hardware four. And if you go around to the back, you have the same setup here where you have your backup camera and it also has that red glow on it, even on the backup camera. So the backup camera is new as well. And then when we look at the bumper, there are no ultrasonic sensors there. Now, there's also supposed to be a radar in here. There's all kinds of different things being set online that there is, but it's not enabled or something else. I'm gonna ask uh, at the service center and see what they say. All right, I'm done with the drive. I just had to interrupt for the radar thing. So I asked and like, without going into too much detail, it, no, there's no radar. Physically, there's no radar. That's it, there's not gonna be. So if you have access to a hardware for a Model S or X, if you don't believe me, I, I believe I will get a lot of pushback on this, but from all evidence I can gather for you, there is no physical radar in the car, present anywhere. You need to take your front tub out and see if you can see a sticker if you're more handy. Uh, take your bumper off <laughs> because we, we got to get to the bottom of this. Um, but from everything I have seen and read and now heard, all indications point to no radar in any Teslas going forward, like at least for now. Here is a comparison of the repeater cameras of Hardware 3 versus Hardware 4. I first put my Model Y in this parking spot, moved it out of the way, and then put the Model S in the exact same positioning. You can see that Hardware 4 has a slightly wider field of view, but most noticeably is the quality is immensely better. Colors are accurate in Hardware 4, whereas Hardware 3 does not have accurate colors for a lot of things you're looking at. While the field of view is bigger on Hardware 4 repeater cameras, it is not enough for the car to use these cameras for side-facing looks. These cameras are still primarily primarily for rear-facing detection. All right, before we continue with this, I wanna talk about something almost as revolutionary as this Tesla I'm sitting in right now, and that's Atlas VPN. You know how my Tesla protects me on the road? Atlas VPN protects me online. It's developed by top cybersecurity specialists. It's like autopilot for your internet. Atlas VPN safeguards you from malicious links, ads, and trackers, notifying you when someone is trying to steal your data. But it's not just about security. It also helps you save money with online shopping, giving you access to the best deals on Netflix, Spotify, 
subscriptions, flights, and hotels. And the best part is one Atlas VPN subscription protects all your devices. For just $1.83 per month, plus three extra months, you get comprehensive online protection with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This is hands down the best VPN deal out there. Don't miss this big deal. Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month, and that's with three extra months thrown in for my viewers. All you have to do is click the link in the video description below, but hurry, it's a limited time offer. Get Atlas VPN, and just like this Tesla, enjoy your ride on the internet highway knowing you're protected. Click the link below and grab this deal. Stay safe online, now let's get back to Hardware 4. Now, talking about the software, of course, we have to go into the settings and see what software version we're on here. So we are on 2023.12.9. That's actually the exact same version that my Model X is on. And even though it has uh, full self-driving enabled, of course it does. You cannot enable full self-driving beta. If you go into autopilot, it just says coming soon in a future update. Uh, so you can't do that. Now going back into the software, additional vehicle information. This is what we really want to see. And it just says full self-driving computer. So Tesla is really getting away with that. Hardware 3 will say the exact same thing. So you can't go in here and see it say hardware 4 or anything like that. It just says full self-driving computer, which Tesla says full self-driving will be possible on hardware 3. So that is a full self-driving computer. <laughs> this is just a different one, a maybe upgraded one, kind of depends on uh, who you ask or what you think about that. Uh, but you still have the AMD Ryzen processor, the lithium ion low voltage battery. So the rest of the things are looking normal here. Unfortunately, you cannot go here to see if you have hardware 4 or not, but those red cameras give it away. All right, so driving here right off the bat, what I'll say is the cameras do look very good. Um, they look great, actually, uh, on this display, and I don't know if maybe just the display is so nice, but we do have a Model X that has hardware 3, and these, especially the repeater cameras, wow, they look so vibrant and clear. I am going to pull some footage from them and overlay that for you on the highway and try to compare that to either my Model X or probably my Model Y and, and see all that, and we'll see if they also have a wider viewing angle than the older hardware 3 side cameras. Now, if you're on hardware 3, there is no, as far as today, retrofitability for these, so you cannot get the cameras on your hardware 3 cars. You cannot get, if there is that computer in there, which it seems like there is, you cannot get that computer in uh, your hardware three cars. So don't think about a retrofit because it's not going to happen. So let's try this acceleration. Holy crap. <laughs> it's not even a plaid. Uh, but wow, is that still ridiculous with the insane mode? Uh, I don't know why you'd need any faster than that. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> it's so good. All right, let's get on this highway. Try some autopilot. All right, so there we go. Autopilot is enabled. And let's see, it should let us go up to, I would imagine, 85, because this would be Tesla Vision. 79. What the heck? <laughs> that's a, that's an, a rather strange uh, speed limit for autopilot. Let me do a lane change here. So I'll just click that. And it does have auto lane change. That camera is ridiculously clear. Holy moly. That looks so good. So 79, let's see, can I go any faster? No, that's, that's weird. Um, I don't know what's up with that. Could be that it's a test drive car. It is limited to 85 uh, max speed. So, you know, as a test drive car, that's how it's gonna be limited. But 79 is just, I don't know, that's very strange to me. So normally on, an un, on a divided road like this, uh, Tesla Vision will go up to 85, no matter what the speed limit is. On an undivided road, the speed limit on autopilot is only five over uh, the actual speed limit. So let's head back to our destination here. So, so far, this is feeling really, really good. And let's talk about the side cameras there. Uh, so I will put those up on the screen for you. And I might not get a comparison of the exact same stretch of road for you, but I think you'll find it uh, pretty stunning how different those side cameras actually look uh, when you compare the footage that's being saved to the USB drive in the glove box from hardware three to hardware four. So a lot more resolution on these hardware four cameras uh, and they are just much higher quality. So we still, of course, need to put a hand on the wheel. We do have the cabin camera there. I don't think it actually cares, though, if, if it can see me or not, unless you're using full self-driving beta. Yeah, I'm covering that with my hand right now. It doesn't seem to care. So Autopilot here, staying in the lane at 79, is doing a great job. Uh, it's doing nothing wrong. Let me make sure, if I look at my Autopilot settings, enable, oh, it's not on. So you need to turn that on so it can do its own lane changes. Good thing I checked that. And it is planning for an upcoming lane change confirm. So I'm just going to put my hand on the wheel. Oh, I have to confirm. Sorry with the turn signal. So I'll just touch that. And it's slowing down to get behind this car. That feels exactly the same as Navigate on Autopilot on Hardware 3. So that's good. It actually feels very smooth. I'm not saying it's better, but I'm saying it's very good. Uh, just from this short little demo, I, you will be happy with the performance of Hardware 4 uh, Autopilot if you pick up a Hardware 4 car. Now beta, again, we don't have yet, but hopefully it's coming soon. 
So slowing down here for this exit, it has, it has lowered its max speed to 70 and now 65. Same behavior as other uh, vehicles. That's, that's normal as hardware three vehicles and taking the exit perfectly. There's nothing wrong with that. We have no weird braking, nothing like that. So this feels really, really good. Man, the Model S is nice. Only thing is it's so small in here. I'm used to the, this same layout in the Model X and I'm like bumping my, my, the brim of my hat on, <laughs> on the, the roof here. So that's pretty funny to me. So it's limiting again. And the car is, yeah, doing a great job. It wants a hand on the wheel. That was actually a long time with no hand on the wheel. And of course it cannot do a left turn. It's putting its left turn signal on though. Stopping for traffic control. Oh, okay, and it'll stop here for the red light. And navigate on autopilot turns off. So perfect, that's exactly how, yep, I'm, I'm here. Put your hands on the steering wheel. That is exactly how we would expect it to perform. It did a great job, it felt really good. So we'll try it one more time. Here we go, getting on the highway here. You definitely can enable it on here. Uh, I'm not sure how well it will merge <laughs> over. That's still a problem. Even in version 11 of full self-driving beta, that's supposed to be very capable on the highway, but let's give it a shot here. So it still wants to go 50. Good thing we have a lot of power. There we go. Now it did bump itself up to 70 there. And I have to do the lane change. We've got plenty of room to get on here. So it's gonna move over to that next lane. So I'm just gonna stop it. That's pretty much what Navigate on Autopilot does. No surprise there. And we'll get back in our lane. Let's do a lane change. So we got someone behind us. You can see, wow, that, I can't get over that camera. It looks so good. Um, it, wow, that's so good. And so the lane change is very good. We squeezed in between two cars here. If I pick that up, you can see there is somebody behind us. They're decently close. They're, the, you know, they're in a pickup, so they're mad that I'm in the same lane as them. And uh, the, the, but the Model S did a great job of squeezing in between those two cars there. Even just with Navigate on Autopilot, uh, the lane changes feel very good. So I think if I go here, I can, yeah, I can't change the requirement. So unfortunately it won't do its own lane changes, but in Navigate on Autopilot, uh, the car will always do six blinker clicks before it moves over, which when you have humans around, they'll see one blinker and then they close the gap because they don't want to let you in. Uh, Beta does not do that on the highway. It, it does a much more human-like job. Uh, but if you do the turn signal all by yourself, then the car will move over pretty much instantly as long as there's room. So let me put this back up. You can see there's kind of somebody there. It shows them in red on the driver's display. Now that there's room, it does move over. So very nice job there by the car. So here's our exit, perfectly handled. The car can go uh, quite a while without a hand on the wheel. That's uh, reminiscent of what I'm experiencing in beta as well. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, if you're looking forward, paying attention, uh, the car is looking at your eyes, make sure you're doing that. And Navigate on Autopilot is over, so now it's my responsibility to take over. Yep, I will take over, so uh, very good there for the car. It did very, very well. I'm, I'm actually very pleased with that. Oh, I'm in the wrong lane. Look at that. Human pilot at it again. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about some of what you're missing. So as you see here, I'm going to park the car into a parking spot and there is nothing on the display indicating there's anything anywhere near me. So there's that piece of wood up there, my car, my Model Y with uh, ultrasonic sensors would easily detect that and it is not detected by this Model S. There are no ultrasonic sensors and it does not have the vision update yet on Hardware 4 to give you the park assist that uses the cameras. Now I have heard that has been improving greatly for people. Some people have a bad experience with it, but I've heard a lot of people saying with a few updates, their camera-based auto park is working really well. Now what everything, uh, every Tesla without USS is missing right now. We can also see in this menu, well, first of all, full self-driving beta, that's not related to what I just said, but we don't have it on this car. If you get on the menu here, you'll see there is no summon. You do not have an option for summon. So if you don't have ultrasonic sensors, you still don't have summon. I really wish that would come to people because they're paying for these cars and, and the features are not there, which is a disappointment. Um, but we know Tesla is working hard on it. It will come in a software update. It'll be good, hopefully, uh, and then by then we'll be happy. But for now, you will not get that if you pay. So just keep that in mind if you're paying for these options. So overall, the features that this car does have that are the same as Hardware 3 are working the same as or better than what you'll find in Hardware 3 cars. So that's good news. There's no regressions there, even though we have some changes to the hardware, even if we don't know exactly what all of the changes are yet. The bad news is there are still some missing software features we don't have. Of course, Tesla is always updating their software. So if you want to buy this car, especially if you're going to keep it for a while, it's not really a reason uh, for you not to buy it. But at the same time, I am always hesitant to spend money on something that's a future promise. So keep in mind that if you buy this, you will not get summoned. And it's something you will get eventually, I'm sure, but who knows when. And would you really want to spend money up front when you don't get it up front? Now, my final thought about Hardware 4, I don't think we've seen everything yet. We know Cybertruck has a front bumper camera. Will that eventually be coming to the sexy lineup? Maybe, maybe not. There's really no evidence for that. And we don't know everything about the computer that's behind the glove box. So I kind of just feel like there's more to be seen here, especially if there is a radar and it does get enabled at some point. But for now, 
what we can compare, what we know, there's really not a huge difference between hardware three and hardware four. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave them down below and you will see me in the next video.